Hello everyone, welcome back. So, let us continue our discussion on response spectrum and uh, the plot that you can see on your screen is uh, what we discussed in the last class. Today we are going to develop the response spectrum using a MATLAB code. But before that, let us quickly um, review what we did in the last class. So, we have a single degree of freedom system. So, the mass is m and then collectively two columns offer some lateral stiffness and damping and then we have a ground excitation x g double dot of t. And then uh, we define the absolute deformation or also we defined relative deformation relative with respect to ground. And then we use this quantity actually relative with respect to ground to find out the response and from that we evaluated this maximum response. It may be displacement, it may be velocity, it may be acceleration and then for a given damping, we repeat the exercise for different T n and then we get this plot. Why we do that? Again, we discussed briefly. So, <coughs> as a designer, what are the uh, parameters that worries us? So, it is actually the base shear, right. So, if the base shear acts this way, it can be both way because we have a dynamic system. So, base shear we call it say Vb and then we have a moment. So, this is we have a moment. So, this is Mb. So, what is the base shear Vb? This is nothing but the stiffness offered by the column times Sd. So, this is the amount of base shear and that is the reason the moment we have Sd, we can find out what is the base shear. And then we can also find out the moment that is h, h is basically the height of the column times your v. So, that is the <coughs> quantity we use for design and that is the reason response spectrum is so useful for uh, designing a structure. Because we have already solved the time history response and for every possible values of T n and uh, eta we already have the maximum response. We also discussed uh, one important um, aspect of the response spectrum is that instead of having three different plots for displacement velocity acceleration, we can combine them and we can have a single plot. This is called tripartite response spectrum because it has three different quantities. You can see on the y axis we have this pseudo velocity versus the time period along the x axis. Obviously, the plot is in log log scale. We derived this y it is in log log scale, the equation for this uh, three plots. And uh, if you recall, we have this deformation <coughs> along 45 degree axis. So, you can see the axis for deformation and similarly for uh, this uh, acceleration which is at 135 degree. Interestingly, if you notice that we write deformation that is the maximum value of relative deformation with respect to ground, but the moment we uh, quantify velocity and acceleration, we introduce the term pseudo and I also explain why it is pseudo because it comes uh, by multiplying this deformation uh, for velocity is omega n and for acceleration it is omega n square. Now, just imagine you have a given say 0.5. So, this is basically the time period for which you design. Obviously, what will be the value if I take this curve? So, let me use a different color. So, 
So, if you use say 0.5 here and for that if you use say this value obviously, if you draw a horizontal line somewhere here will be the pseudo velocity and then uh, if we take a projection of uh, displacement axis. So, we will have somewhere here that is the amount of displacement and then similarly if we take a projection on y axis. So, this is the value of pseudo acceleration. So, we have acceleration, we have displacement and then we have velocity. Out of all three quantities, we do not use the term pseudo for deformation, but for other two, we use the term pseudo. Okay. So, the designer you can then refer this plot and then immediately find out these three quantities that is useful for their design. So, that is the advantage of having this tripartite plot, because a single plot will give you all the informations that you need to design the structure. Now, going back to this plot again, we will actually develop this plot in a minute, but before we do that, this plot has certain features and particularly one feature, let me first explain and then we will check when we will develop the code. You can notice that at T n equal to 0, it has the value of maximum acceleration, which is not 0, but what is the significance of this value? The moment you have T n equal to 0, so what is T n is equal to 2 pi by omega n. So, T n equal to 0 means what? Natural frequency of the system is infinite. That means, the system is extremely rigid and a rigid system is excited by an earthquake. Obviously, what will happen if we have a rigid system, if we just shake it, it will shake with the same acceleration level and if I just focus at the top, obviously, the relative deformation between these two will be 0. The acceleration I gave at the bottom will be the same acceleration, but I can experience at the top. Now, this response spectrum is what? It is the maximum value of the response, right? So, if I focus at the acceleration response at the top and find out the maximum value of that response will be what? It is the maximum value of the ground acceleration, which we call peak ground acceleration. So, it will be PGA or peak ground acceleration, it will be the same response that we will get the moment we have this uh, T n equal to 0. We will see that when we will develop the code. So, let us uh, do that. So, <coughs> we start with this Nigam Jennings code that we developed earlier, this code you all know, I have already shared this code with you. So, let us first solve a single degree of freedom system using Nigam Jennings and then we will repeat the same procedure and uh, find out the response spectrum, right. So, Now, I have already shared the steps for generating response spectrum. So, what is the first step? Load the earthquake record, right. So, it is L centro and then we have the acceleration is uh, stored in this L centro file. If you recall, we used this earlier. So, uh, 
the second column is uh, the ground acceleration you also have t that is time which is in the first column. Then we define time period say T n which is for the timing say let us take 1. So, we have a oscillator with a time period of 1 second then we have eta which is say 0 0.05. So, we consider 5 percent damping and then uh, we have to call this code that we developed earlier. So, we have x of t and then x dot of t and for that we have to define the initial condition. So, x 0 is 0 and then x t 0 is equal to also 0. We use 0 0 initial condition. Now, what is the mass? If you recall the equation of motion, mass is 1, then what is the stiffness? It is uh, W n square that is the natural frequency square. So, we have to first find out the natural frequency. So, it will be 2 pi by T n. Right. And then uh, we have f of t is equal to minus m x g double dot of t. So, that is the forcing function, which is arbitrarily defined, or sorry, the using the record. Uh, it is arbitrary forcing function, uh, we solve it using Nicomgenics. Yeah. So, let us uh, quickly solve it, let us check first and then we will develop it further to draw the response spectrum. So, response spectrum. So, the L central motion is not here. So, oh it is there. The name is L central underscore N s that is the north south component. So, we have the response of the system. Now, what we can do? We can find out the maximum displacement. So, which is maximum of absolute of x t and then uh, we have pseudo spectral velocity. and then pseudo spectral acceleration. So, so, you can see we have the maximum value of the response that is the relative displacement and uh, respective velocity and acceleration also we can see. Now, what we have to do? We have to repeat this procedure for different values of time period, right. So, for that again different values of time period are already saved. So, what we do? We load this file also. So, so 
So, if you look at this file, so here are the different values of time period already stored. You can define your own time period, that is not an issue. So, what we do, we instead of giving T n 1 second at this line. So, what we do, we load here because we have already the one column. So, we can write T p that is the time period. Now, if you do that, obviously, we have multiple values of time period. So, you will have multiple values of omega n. So, and then uh, we have to run a loop that we will do in a minute. For that, let us first evaluate the number of time period we have and then also initialize three response quantities. Okay. Then what we do, we run a for loop for every values of time period we have and then for every value we find out what is the stiffness and then we call the function file for the solution. Obviously, now we have multiple values of S d. So, accordingly we store the values And then once we solve for all the values of T n, then we can plot T n versus S d. So, Okay. So, now let us run this code. Oh, this is a small error. So, this omega n will be omega n i i because we have multiple entries in omega n. <clears throat> Just one minute, let me suppress this I I, otherwise every time it will plot and it will unnecessarily take time. Yeah. So, what you can see on your screen is the response spectrum for different values of T n. So, we have plotted S d and I think let me just quickly check the unit 
of uh, ground acceleration. Yeah, so it is in G. So So, what we do? We multiply here with 9.81 and then um, the response that we will get will have unit in meter. So, if you run it again, So, we have the displacement response spectrum. Similarly, if we plot the other values, so we have velocity response spectrum and then acceleration response spectrum. So, we have S V and then S A. So, this will be S V unit is meter per second and then we have or let me write it and this time we again go back to g unit so yeah so what you get is actually there are three plots. The first one is obviously for displacement, and then second one is for velocity and the third one is for acceleration. So, the input motion is L centro and then uh, this is for 5 meter per sorry 5 percent um, critical damping ratio. So, if I change it to 2 percent critical damping ratio we can again develop the response spectrum. Now, let us see what is the value of this PSA when this T n equal to 0 that I have already explained. For that, um, let me find out the value. So, it is the maximum value. Sorry, this is the So, T n last value of T n and then first value of T n is 0 0.04. Okay. So, corresponding S A which is our P G right. So, what we can see if we run this code, we have to divide it by 9.81 and then only it will have the same unit. So, you can see, so the maximum value of this ground motion, uh, this is actually PGA. And then we have, we call it PSA uh, when you have 0 period. So, you can see the PGA is 0 0.2808, that is the peak value of ground acceleration. And then when you have time period 0, in our case time period is not exactly 0, it is 0 0.04, but it is tending towards 0 and then you can uh, see the PSA for 0 time period is 0 0.2832. It is not exactly uh, PGA because uh, time period is not exactly 0, but you can reduce it further and it will tend to this PGA value which is logical that I have already explained. So, 
what we get is uh, the acceleration response spectrum and if you look at the shape of the acceleration response spectrum this type of uh, uh, response spectrum is given in our Indian code obviously that is the design response spectrum uh, that we get after finding out the response spectrum from uh, multiple um, input motion and then there is a specific procedure to average it out and develop the design response spectrum. But the shape if you look at a similar shape we get and for zero time period it is actually anchored at PGA. Now sometimes uh, this entire exercise is done for normalized case that means PGA will be 1 and then in that case uh, this uh, acceleration response spectrum will be anchored at 1 and then you find out for a particular place what is the uh, coefficient and you multiply that uh, with this value and you will get basically the ordinate of the acceleration response spectrum. Those are the design procedures we are for the time being not worried but uh, in this course we are more worried how to develop response spectrum what is the logic behind the response spectrum and uh, this is how you actually develop the response spectrum that you see in your textbook. Now, now one last thing is that we can plot the same thing uh, in a single uh, graph and for that let me take this one. And we go to log log scale and then If you plot it, similar type of plot, tripartite plot you get uh, in textbook and this is the one that gives all three uh, different quantities in a single plot. Obviously, you have to draw the two axes, one along 45 degree, another along 135 degree and then from that same plot um, you can read the displacement, velocity, acceleration and this is how the tripartite plots are generated. Now, if I go back to the plot, here is the tripartite plot. You can see on your screen, this is what we uh, discussed earlier. It is again for El Centro and you can see different, uh, different plots. So, this is uh, for um, one value of eta and then as you keep on changing eta you get different plots. Now, um, this is for a particular earthquake we can repeat the exercise for different earthquake and then uh, this is how the design spectrum uh, elastic design spectrum is developed. So, what you can see for that same El Centro you see the dotted line that gives you the design response spectrum. And uh, you can see the time period between which these uh, dotted straight lines are fixed. So, we have different time period regions denoted by A, B, C, D, E, F. This figure you will get in Onil K. Chopra's book. So, these are the four time periods that actually defines the shape of the elastic uh, design spectrum. But the point to be noted here again we have you can see pseudo velocity and again here you can see the velocity is normalized versus time period right. So, that is the point. And then again at 45 degree we have the displacement again it is normalized and uh, the acceleration also uh, what you can see. So, this is the normalized spectrum and the different regions are marked here. So, this is extremely important we have three different regions and these three regions are demarcated particularly by these two C and D 
because between these two is the velocity sensitive region and on either side we have acceleration sensitive region and the displacement sensitive region. So, this is how the uh, plots are developed although in this course because our course is on uh, structural vibration analysis not on the earthquake resistant design, we will not go to the theories of how to develop this elastic design response spectrum. But what we are worried in this course, how this response spectrum is developed, what is the logic and how can we combine all these three different response quantities in a single plot and how effective they are uh, when we combine from the designer's point of view. So, that is the main objective of this course and uh, I think that is uh, clear to you how to develop the MATLAB code and for a particular earthquake how to solve and find out the response spectrum that is explained. So, with that let us close here uh, and uh, I will suggest I will uh, give you some problem uh, you develop your own code and then um, see how this response spectrum looks like. I will share uh, a few more earthquake so that you can plot the response spectrum and compare the response spectrum for different earthquake and see how they vary differently. But the main features that we have already discussed that you can um, identify from the plots you get from your own MATLAB code. Do that exercise if you have any trouble do let us know in the open session then we will clear all your doubts. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.